Hello everyone, welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host and this is going to be one of my more serious life lesson videos. This will not be product based, but um, I, first of all, let me just say this. Step one in restoration is going to be healing. If those of y'all have been following me, you know that I have been um, going through my own personal battles recently. And in January, God told me marriages will be restored. And in this video, I just want to kind of talk to you. But God told me that marriages will be restored. And the one thing that I didn't see coming was that I would be the test. See... It's easy for you to scream to the mountaintop that marriages will be restored when everything is going great in your marriage. It's easy to say marriages will be restored when all of your needs are being met and lack is not existing. It's easy for you to say marriages will be restored when you're getting all the attention that you need. But when God gives you the gift of something called wife school, he didn't tell you what type of wife you was going to encounter. He didn't tell you if the wives that you were going to be talking to were going to be in a good place when you talk to them. He didn't tell you that the wives that you talked to were going to be getting everything that they needed. He didn't tell you if the people that came to you was going to be married, was going to be separated, was going to be on the verge of divorce. He didn't tell you anything. The only thing he said was, you have this feminine touch wife school. Your job is to teach wives the fundamentals of being wives. But he did not tell me what type of wives that I was going to encounter. And one thing that I have learned in this whole process is that life itself is a teacher. You can't talk about separation if you've never been separated. You can't talk about separation if you've never stayed in a bed and slept separate from your husband. You can't talk about separation if you don't know what it feels like to have your whole covering removed from you. About three Sundays ago, I was on my way to church. And I had um, Madison and Taylor in the car with me. And on the way to church, my pastor called. And when she called, she came over my radio. She, you know, because I was driving. And she said, Ron, I just called to tell you I'm standing in agreement with what you're saying because marriages will be restored. Don't stop. Don't stop. She just kept telling me, don't stop. And I hung up the phone with her and I was on my way to church, y'all, and the tears just started rolling down my face because I had so many people inboxing me and emailing me, telling me what great success that they were having. But what a lot of people didn't know was I was going through my own personal battle and I had just actually moved out the house with my husband into an apartment. And I asked my kids, I said, how is it that everybody's marriage is being restored, but mine is being torn completely apart? How is it that everybody is reaping all of these benefits and it just seems like I am in the worst space that I have ever been in in my life? Like I literally could not understand. Even with my children, with them having to go through the process with me. How can I talk to someone whose children is going through the process and I never experienced the process? How can I relate? One thing that I know is when God gives you an assignment, he is going to test you. Keep in mind, when he told me marriages would be restored, I had no idea that I would be the test. But today, I can tell you that I am obedient to what he said. And I kept saying that marriages would be restored. And I kept believing that even mine would be restored in this process. And guess what? Healing is taking place. Guess what? Restoration is taking place. So, I'm making this video because for all of the wives who are on the fence and you doubting and you saying, well, I don't necessarily know 
what direction to go in. I actually did wife coach. I did um, relationship coaching with a couple yesterday who are living separate as well. And you have people that are really on the fence and they know they love each other and they know they want to be with each other, but they have to kind of figure out ways. How do we get along with each other at this point in our life? See, what you have to understand and even what I tell my children is you don't know what's going to happen with life. You don't know when you when you sign up to be married to people, you're going to go through births. When you sign up for marriage, you're going to go through births as well as deaths. You're going to go through ups as well as downs. COVID taught me you're going to go from employment to unemployment. It is so many things that you're going to go through. And the thing is, we all not going to cope the same. Coping strategies are different from person to person. So I'm taking this moment because I want to publicly apologize to my husband for bringing our issues to my platform. I personally felt, and this is not justifying it, but I personally felt the same way I show my wins, I show my, my losers as well. In other words, I show my win, I show my loss, right? But I'm the one who's in, in, the, in the spotlight. I'm the one that's in the public eye, not him. So Spencer Parker, I apologize for humiliating you. I apologize for embarrassing you publicly because that was completely wrong. But what I want everybody to understand is even when it looked bad, even when it looked toe up, even when it looked like it can't be restored, y'all, I apologize. My phone keep ringing. I wanted to do this video. My um, I had a death in my family last night. My great grandmother Florence Collins, who turned 100 years old in January, she turned 100. She passed last night, so I'm actually about to get ready to go and be with my family. But I couldn't let this morning go by without making this video to one apologize to my husband and to two give other wives hope and to let them know to keep on praying, to keep on pressing, to keep on speaking it. Keep on believing it. In other words, if this is what you're asking God for, your faith can't waver. If you're asking God for restoration of your family, your faith can't waver. If you're asking God for you and your husband to be in a better place, your faith can't waver. I'm just saying this to the wives because a lot of single women can't understand the walk of being a wife. A lot of single women can't understand the walk of unconditional love. See, when I was talking to my children, See, they don't necessarily understand unconditional love because, see, they, children of love have conditions. And I don't think you could ever reach the point of unconditional love until you have birthed something into the world. And when I'm saying birth something, I mean labored for it. I mean sacrifice for it and actually birth something into the world. Then you have an attachment to it and therefore unconditional love can form. But see, when you have people who ain't never sacrificed for nothing, they never labored for nothing, they never birthed nothing, they can never understand an unconditional type of love. They can never understand a guapi, godly type of love. And I thank God for allowing him to possess, to, for him to, to allow me to possess an aguapi type of love, a, a, a godly type of love, a forgiving type of love. Because the thing that I know is we all going to need grace one day. We all going to need mercy one day. We all going to need forgiveness one day. And a lot of times people can't move forward in their marriages because they don't know how to forgive. They don't know how to extend grace. They don't understand what mercy is. But I thank you, Bridget Stott, for, for just being a great teacher because this, this is a product of you and what God put in you for you to put in your people. This is a product of you, my pastor, took her time and nurture her sheep. I didn't get here by myself. So the thing is, when I told God to use me and allow me to be a vessel, when you ask God to use you and allow you to be a vessel, because I had such this, this big, huge following, yeah, you don't know how he going to use you. And I had no idea that I would be the test. But I thank God for the opportunity to be the test. And I thank God in advance for the victory that's going to come along because guess what? It was a horrible experience, but God going to get the, he going to get glory, glory. He will be glorified in this. So you all be blessed. You all stay encouraged. You all be hopeful. Don't give up.
Because guess what? I have had so many wives have, I was in Zachary and a wife stopped me and she said, you the lady that's that on the store, I follow you. Oh my God, you inspire me so much and this is that the other. I've had wives to come into the store during the evening when I'm working to just basically to encourage me because even in, in this, I needed to be encouraged. I'm always on the end doing the encouraging, but even in this, I needed to be encouraged. And the one thing that I said when I went through this whole process is, I will not be on some bald-headed whole shit. I, you, you're not about to, I'm not about to entertain nothing. Because let me tell you something, when you're going through something, baby, the devil know it, and he going to send what he, he going to send it. He going to send men, he going to send women, he going to send this, he going to send that. He going to send it all. He gonna send it all, but guess what? God know my heart, and he know one thing. I have one interest, and that is my husband and my family in restoration of what we had. So today I'm in a I'm I'm in a good place today. I am in a place where I understand that I can only have faith for what I believe. Yeah. In other words. My faith can't be activated if I don't believe it. It can't be activated if I don't believe it. God cannot allow this wife school to do what he needed to do if I have not experienced certain things. How can I tell a wife about something that I ain't been through? How am I going to tell her about this type of hurt and I don't even know what this hurt feel like? Oh, but today I know what this hurt feel like. Oh, today what I know what it what it feel like to go to sleep at night and, and sob and cry on pillows and wet them up. I know what it feel like. So the thing is, a lot of times people they like, well, I can't I can't receive from this person because they ain't never been through this. I can't receive from that person because they ain't never been through that. Oh, but Sharonda Parker and been there, done that. Oh, Sharonda Parker know what it, what it feel like to have the real range stuff because she had to pay some rent last month for the first time in her life. Yeah. And I told Amber, I said, ooh, Amber, this don't even feel right. This don't even feel good. It don't even feel natural to me. Yeah, it don't even feel natural to me because I've never had that responsibility. But I stayed on my knees. And y'all, if I'm lying, I'm flying. Every morning at 3 a.m., God had me up praying, literally praying in the spirit. And it was like he would wake me up like an alarm clock at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'd get on my knees on the side of the bed and just start praying. And I would just pray and pray until I would literally wear myself out, get back in the bed and go back to sleep until it was time for me to wake my children up for school to take them to school in the morning. Praying without ceasing. You can't have a spirit that you're going to give up. You, you, have to, you have to understand the bigger picture. You have to see the, the, the sunlight at the end of the rain. In other words, you have to continue to speak positive. I don't care what your spouse do. I don't care how your spouse act. I'm talking about what you do as a wife that won't it. And you have to know if your husband really want it. Because if he really don't want it, ain't nothing nobody can do about it. But if he want it, and you want it, and you having a difference in opinion, or you, you know, it's, it's some type of issue that's going on, God will come in and he will turn that thing all the way around. So, again, husband, I apologize to you. Even to my children, I have apologized to them. I've apologized to them every day just because they're having to go through the process. But one thing that I know is I'm so grateful that it's going to be some good in it. You all be blessed. You all enjoy the rest of your day. Keep my family in prayer. I'm about to go and be with the Florence uh, Collins family in Port Hudson. If you did, if you don't know, my great-grandmother Florence Collins, she transition last night and she was 100 years old so we are extremely blessed because a lot of people don't have their family here to see 100 years old and and um my husband is the one that gave me the info you know he the one who 
who contacted me to let me know what was going on because my family contacted him. And that's another thing that a lot of times people don't even understand. When you've been together so long, your family don't look at you as family and don't look at your spouse's family. They look at your spouse's family. In other words, he's the one who had to con contact me and let me know what was going on in my family. Yeah. You all be blessed.